Hey everybody, back today with another sound design tutorial on Serum. I've had a lot of questions lately on my channel about how to get Serum to do arpeggiated patterns, and it's certainly not straightforward inside of Serum. A lot of synths have a dedicated internal arpeggiator, Serum does not, but what it does have is extremely advanced LFO modulation. So that's what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you a couple of really simple hacks to get Serum working correctly in a matter of minutes. There's a couple little tricks that if you don't get, it's not going to work right. It can be really frustrating. So I found a really super simple way to do this. I'm going to share the tricks with you, and let's go take a look inside of Serum. All right, let's take a look at the specific sound that's being arpeggiated here. I've got two kind of bassy patches that are being arpeggiated. Here's the first one. Let's open up Serum. Now we're more or less going to ignore the rest of what's happening inside of Serum because this isn't a bass sound design tutorial. I really just want to focus on the core of what makes the arpeggiator part of this patch tick. But if you guys want to kind of explore how I put the rest of this patch together, I did give it to you guys as a free download in the video description. So grab that if you want to check it out. So the first thing you're going to do is go down to the LFO section and choose an LFO that you're going to use for this. Now, I already have LFO1 and LFO2 being used for other modulation in this patch, so I chose LFO3. Now you're going to need two LFOs, so make sure you have two slots available. The first slot is going to be for what notes the arpeggiator is playing. And here's the first essential step, is you need to take your grid and set it to exactly 12 steps. And that's because there are 12 semitones in an octave, and that allows you to basically make each step in the grid as one semitone, so you can get the notes perfectly on. In some other tutorials I've seen, they haven't done that, and it gets really finicky to try and actually get the right notes and, and lock them in by ear. And in this way, we're actually going to be quantizing the notes. Your next step is going to be to assign the modulation. Now, you could take this and you could drop it to the pitch of the oscillators up here, but I prefer a shortcut because some of the oscillators, for example, the sub oscillator, you can't do that. You can't do the drag and drop modulation. So I prefer to do this from the mod matrix. So how you'll set that up is you'll go down to an empty modulation source and you'll pick your LFO, in this case LFO3, and then you'll assign it to global master tune. And that's going to pitch up the entire synth globally, all oscillators, sub oscillator included, which is a lot easier for this type of patch. Now, here comes the essential step that if you miss, you're not going to get this right. So pay attention to this one. You want to go to the global tab and you want to click double click for typable values on controls and select that. Now we go back to the mod matrix. And what this allows us to do is to double click on any parameter in the synth and type in an exact value. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, there's 12 semitones in an octave. So we type in 12 and presto, there we have an octave of modulation but it doesn't actually work like that. And this is something that I ended up having to reach out to Steve about to figure out. So in this case, what you actually have to do to get it locked to an octave, because an octave is 12 semitones exactly, is you have to type in 12 and then ST afterwards for semitones. Now watch what happens. I press enter and you can see the actual modulation range is nine. So this doesn't actually correspond to semitones. This is a percentage of the parameter. So again, we're going to double click on that. We're going to type in 12 ST, and that's going to give us 12 semitones of modulation. And you can do that anywhere in the modulation matrix where something corresponds to pitch. Next up, you can see that by default, it does the modulation in a bipolar direction. So we're going to click that to make sure it's only going up in one direction. So it's not going to split the octave in two and go up and down. That would be really messy. You could, if you wanted to, also do two octaves or three octaves of modulation. All you need to do is type in 24 ST, and you'd be good there. But in this case, I'm just going to use one octave of modulation. So that's the kind of initial setup. So now we get something that sounds like this. 
And that's where the other LFO comes in, is it helps us to get that gated sound. So we're using LFO 4 here. And let me show you how I've set that up. First of all, you'll notice that we're using the exact same LFO settings as the first one. So we're setting it to trigger, so it's going to re-trigger. And it's BPM synced. It's at a half bar tempo and 12 steps. So everything here is the same about this LFO. And that's important to sync the pitch the note's playing with the gate or the trigger of the note. So 12 steps on the grid, which is important. And then all I did is I created basically a, a note and there's a keyboard shortcut for doing this. If you hold down the shift key while you drag, it'll drag in increments of the grid. Okay, so let's take uh, let's take the grid and go like this. And if I did like that, you can see it's dragging it in an increment of the grid. So if we go back to 12, you can see all I did was uh, was like this. And it creates those exact nice quantized steps. Then similar to what we did with LFO3, I actually did the modulation in the mod matrix. So what we did here is we took LFO4 and we selected global amp. So that's the amp output of the entire synth. We went into a unidirectional direction and then we used the modulation down here to negative 100%. And so that created a nice gated effect. And all I've done right now is I've scaled it down. So this is going to activate it again. So here's without that. And here's what it sounds like with that applied. Now you may want to use one or the other. You don't absolutely have to do this, but I really liked having that gated effect on mine. So that's what I chose to do. Okay, great. Let's go take a look at the final step. We'll go back to LFO3, which is the one determining the pitch. And these are determining the notes that are being played. Now, what I chose to do with my arpeggiated pattern is to follow the notes of the chord tones up top. So if we look inside the MIDI, I'm playing an F major chord into a G major chord. And I mirrored that with arpeggios inside of the synth. So all I'm doing is holding down an F and then holding down a G. And then Serum's doing the rest of the work for me via that LFO. So let's take a look at how it's doing that. I use these steps like a step sequencer to quantize to the note values. Now, dragging these things up and down, there's a little keyboard shortcut you need to know. And that is if I hold down shift and I move these up like I showed you before, you're going to get values in between semitones. So you're going to get these weird wonky notes if you try and adjust it or if your grid isn't set on 12. So there's another keyboard modifier. On Mac, it's shift and option. I think on PC, it's probably Shift and Alt. And what that does is it snaps these steps in the LFO to exact grid increments. So what this is going to do, because I have 12 semitones or 12 gradients in the grid, it's going to snap it to exact semitone values, which is really great. So I'm going to hold down Shift and Option. And what I'm playing is a major triad. So this is the root. Here's the F that I'm holding down. And if we go one, two, three four semitones up that's the major third so that's the middle of the triad and then this is the perfect fifth so this is the one three five of that chord and then this is the full 12 semitones up so that's the octave so that's how that pattern works you can create other chord patterns too now one thing i should mention is you have to be really really careful what input note you're playing and that's actually why i have the second serum track here you can see the first one's labeled arp maj for major and this one's labeled ARP min for minor. Because if you tried to play this on certain degrees of the scale, you'd actually be playing a wrong note because of the intervals between notes and the spelling of the scale. So depending on what triads you're using in your chord progression, you could have major, minor, and diminished triads. You could also have things like sus chords. So be really aware of that when you're programming your ARPs. And with this technique, the ARP that you're playing is going to be fixed per serum patch because you can't really automate those LFO steps. So here's my major ARPs. And then here's the minor ARP. And if we take a look inside of that LFO, you'll see it's actually slightly different. So here's the middle note of the triad and you can see this is one 
two, three semitones up, making it a minor third. So it's a minor triad. So this pattern is different than the first one. So just be aware of that when you guys are building these ARPs. And actually, one really neat thing that I would do if I were you to build these patterns out is make use of Serum's ability to save these LFO shapes. So if you're going to be using these frequently and you don't want to have to rebuild these every time, then what you might want to do is go and click the folder icon and you can go save shape. So you could save it to your user folder and you could call this major triad ARP and you could save that. And the same thing with this pattern, you can save this too. You can click on the folder icon, go save shape, and you can say maybe ARP gate or something like that. And that way you can call those up if you're opening up a blank LFO in the future and you want to call up one of those shapes, you can go into your user library. You can see I've put in some of my own here already. And you can call those up, saving yourself some time inside of Serum. So that's a wrap for this tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Don't forget, I've got a whole playlist of free Serum tutorial videos on my channel. So make sure to check those out if you haven't seen them yet. They cover everything from the basics of Serum to some of my pro tips building wavetables, and then some of the more advanced new features like the internal resample and render functions that are just super, super juicy. So make sure you check those out. I'm also giving away some of my free wavetables in those videos. So make sure you grab those. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel so you stay fresh on all of our updates. And I hope you guys have fun using this in your tunes. I'll catch you soon. Peace.